Good morning, everybody. Welcome to um, the semester and class on uh, Christian marriage and family. It's uh, wonderful to have all of you here logged in as online students. We want to welcome also the um, students who are at the e-learning uh, course. Thank you for joining in. Thank you for um, taking this time to journey alongside with us um, as we explore and look at this entire series on understanding marriage and family. Um, so it's a pleasure to meet all of you. Uh, I think we'll just go through a quick round of introduction. Just maybe give us your name. Tell us where you probably logged in. I know some of the students are here in uh, uh, in Bangalore, they're uh, on. Uh, they're with us here, but if there are any other online students, so I'd just like maybe I'll call out the names. You can just uh, quickly, um, you know, share a little bit about yourself, which city you're in, and maybe a little bit about yourself, and that'll be helpful. So I just want to introduce myself. I'm uh, Jean George. Um, I work as a counselor. Uh, I reside here in Bangalore, and I've been part of APC since uh, 2004. Um, I've been part of the counseling ministry since uh, 2011, um, and also been teaching uh, two courses in Bible College, which is Christian Marriage and Family and uh, uh, Christian Counseling. So just a quick, uh, uh, it'd be great to have an introduction of each of you. So maybe... I'll just call out as uh, names as per what's on my list. And uh, you could just quickly unmute yourselves and just say a hello. Give us a little brief about yourself, which city you're logging in from, and uh, any anything else that you maybe what you're doing, whether you're in ministry or whether you're working or uh, whatever else that you are working through. Right. So I've got Anand Paul on my list first. Anand Paul, just quickly unmute. If you can put on your video, it'll be nice. So I have a face to the name as well. Anand? Uh, I'm not able to hear you. Uh, can anyone hear Anand? Or is it just me that I'm not able to hear Anand? It's my mom. OK, hi, hi. I know hi, my mom. I'm from Andhra Pradesh. Yeah, so Anand, where are you from? I'm from Andhra. You're from Andhra. So are you logging in from Andhra? No, no, no. I'm I'm on campus student. Oh, you're on campus. Okay. It's okay. Yeah. So if you could just put on your video so I I can uh, get the get the face also, that would be great. Okay. So we'll we'll move to who's Who's next? Anthony? Anthony Solomon? Oh, yes, Anand. Hi. Hi, hi. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Anthony? Anthony Solomon? Morning. Good morning. Um, my name is Anthony Solomon, and um, I'm from Nigeria. I'm into full-time uh, media, media support officer. Mm. I'm into full-time ministry too. Welcome, Anthony. Thank you. Thank you. This must be early morning for you, isn't it? Or late yes, night, I guess. Yes. Uh, this is like uh, uh, five thirty a.m. Oh, no, thank you. Thank you so much for your commitment of joining in. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ma. All right. Thank you, uh, Chira Gawala. Chira Gawala. Hi, Chira. Hi, ma'am. Hi, ma'am. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. So, Tira, a little bit about yourself. Tell us which place you're from. Ma'am, I'm from Assam, Northeast. Okay. okay. Yes, ma'am. I'm helping my church. I'm doing ministry. Okay. And uh, I was in Bible college last year, but this semester, because of my health issue, I'm doing mm -hmm. online. Okay. Okay. So, I was just wondering if it is the same Tira that I met last time okay so it is okay yes ma'am yes ma'am all right okay. i think we we met ma'am yes yes of course of course yes, yeah yes, nice to meet you tira thank yes, you yes. right francis okay francis is familiar but yeah for for the rest of the class francis francis
Okay, we'll wait for Francis. Uh, Jacqueline. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, yes, go ahead, Francis. Go ahead, go ahead. Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm Bible College student. I'm John Are you from on campus? Okay, where are you from originally? Francis? I'm from Kerala. Okay, for the benefit of everybody, Francis. I know I know you, but nevertheless, for the benefit. Thank you. All right, I have ja Jacqueline Paul, Jacqueline Joel. I'm not sure if I pronounced your name right. Uh, hello, hello everyone. My name is Jackin. Jackin. Okay. Hi, Jackin. So, we live in Bangalore for almost uh, 12 years, but we are from Tamil Nadu. And okay. I'm a homemaker. My daughter is in her 12th standard. My husband is working uh -huh. for a female automobile company. And we okay. worship in APC East. Okay. Nice. Nice to meet you. Thank you, Jackin. So, uh, yeah, we'll be interacting a lot more. Yes. Right. Nina. Hi, Nina. Nina is also familiar to me. But hi, Nina. Hi. Uh, I'm, there's another Nina as well. So I'm not oh, sure. No, I, I, I think I meant Nina. Oh, yeah. Uh, Nina Santosh. Oh, okay. Nina let Santosh. her finish then. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I know both the Ninas are familiar. Nina Santosh. Uh, hi, Pastor. Hi, Pastor. I'm Nina here. Nina here. Yeah, uh, Nina, you can give a little bit about your background. Where are you from? Okay, I think we'll go on. Uh, Nikhil, Nikhil Masih. Hi, Nina. Uh, hi. Hi, hi, hi. Okay, Nikhil Masih. Hello, good morning, ma'am. Good morning, Nikhil. Uh, Ma'am, I'm Nikhil from Farukhabad, Uttar Pradesh. Uh, I'm serving with my pastors. So right now I'm on campus. OK, thank you. Thank you, Nikhil. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Yeah, Nina John. Hi, I'm uh, Nina John. And uh, I belong to Kerala. We live in Bangalore. And I worship at, uh, we worship at APC North. Um, yeah, I help coordinate Bible studies for women. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nina. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Ravali? Hi, everyone. Hi. I am Ravali Putala. I work for an IT firm. And uh, yeah, I'm right now a Bible college. Are you on campus, Ravali? Uh, currently, I'm on campus. Okay, okay, all right. Welcome, welcome, Ravali. Uh, Rinchen, Rinchen Fee, I'm, not, I'm sorry if I pronounced this wrong. Um, Rinchen? Yes, yes, Pastor. My name is Rinchanti, and uh, I'm from Mongo, and I'm an on campus student. Oh, this is Rin. This is Rin. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> all right, okay. I, I got a little lost looking at your name. All right, welcome, Rin. Shivakumar? Shivakumar? Hi, good morning, madam. Good morning, good morning. My name is Shivakumar. I am from Mansur. I am working for an hospital, ma'am. Okay. So you are logging in from Mysore? Yes, ma'am. I am an online oh. student. You are an online student. Okay, okay. Welcome. Welcome, Shukumar. And Sri, Sri, okay, Radha. This is Radha. Sri Radha from campus, I think. Sri Radha, okay. All right. Okay, so welcome, all of you. It's, uh, it's a real pleasure to um, be here and uh, just go ahead with this course with you. Um, we're going to be looking at the entire uh, book on Christian marriage and family. And we've uh, divided this class over the next couple of weeks, which is 16 weeks. And we will look at it in, uh, in different sections. Okay, So uh, today, we're going to be focusing on the very first chapter. The book has been uploaded on the, uh, on the stream for the online students, as well as uh, for the e-learning students, it's there. Uh, on, on the e-learning portal. So if you could just, if you'd like to follow through as we're going ahead in class, 
that will really help help you and, and also to go back uh, and learn. So uh, one of the things before we get, uh, before I start and, you know, we, we look into this entire um, uh, lesson and this entire course, um, just a little bit about uh, myself. Yes, I am married. I've been married for 20 years. We have, uh, my husband works here in Bangalore. Um, we have two children. I have a son who's 18 years, is doing his first year degree. And I have a daughter who's in grade nine. Um, so, uh, you know, one thing that I do love about teaching is, is the way that um, uh, I can look back or I can draw from my own personal experiences, my own personal account, and bring that uh, through through in class. Now, even as I do that, um, I'm requesting and I'm encouraging everyone to equally participate in conversations. Um, I'm sure there are there, there are quite a few of us. There are 15 of us here, and I think there are a few of us who are married. Um, and that and and uh, you know, just the wealth of of uh, being in a marriage in itself can can really help some of us learn as well as bring about our testimonies. For those who aren't married, this is not a, maybe a time for you to say, okay, this, this doesn't apply to me. Um, I always wish that before I got married, I had these lessons uh, taught to me so that I could be more well prepared as I got into marriage. So for all those who are unmarried um, or yet to be married, please, you know, stay awake and take in as much as you can and do participate because uh, uh, even as we're looking at the course as marriage, this is, uh, some of these lessons that we have can help you in any relationship that you have, those with your parents, those with your siblings, um, those with friends, those with people you work at. So um, all of this can be applied in some way or the other, all right? So I'm really looking for an interactive class um, I know I can't see you all, but nevertheless, I trust that all of you all are behind this black thumbnails that I can see. So if you are moved to switch your cameras on, I'd really appreciate it so that I don't have to be talking to a, to a, a blank screen and I can, I can actually interact with each of you. So if you can do that, that will be great. And I will really appreciate that. So Great. Thank you so much for some of you who have responded to that. Really, really appreciate that. OK, I just would like to know how many of you all here are married. You could just put a thumbs up um, or, a, or a hands up. There is a there is a way that you can raise a hand. Uh, OK, Shiva Kumar, Nina John. I think Nina Santosh is married. Uh, anybody else? Ja Jackin is also married, I think, right? Uh, Yes, Jacqueline is married. So there are just four people in this group, I guess, who's married. Yeah, OK, so four, four of you. Great. All right, so um, I think before I begin, let me share with you that um, uh, remember, even as I'm teaching this, this message is not just for you, but it is for me. Uh, I'm not in a perfect marriage, but I am learning just as much as all of you are. And uh, I think every time I go through this course, there's a lot of uh, learning that I receive, uh, not just from uh, the word that we're teaching, but also from the, uh, from the discussions that come by. And that's why I think uh, even as we're learning, when we discuss, there's a, there's a lot more of uh, wealth that we receive and, and hear of how God's working in the marriages of, of everyone. OK, so today we're going to be looking at chapter one in the um, in the book. So if you have your books with you, we're on page one on understanding marriage. Um, it's it's there as a download. So you could just open that and we're on page one and you could just go through that. Maybe the verses that that we need to read, you know, I'll ask some of you all to read so that there is some form of an engagement. OK, so. Uh, to to put um, a, a basic uh, understanding of this entire course, we first of all need to begin to understand what the Bible says about knowledge. So we're going to really bring about a biblical understanding of marriage. And um, 
why that is so important is because when we look around in in the place that we stay in the world around us yes people uh, talk about marriages people are married and you will find many different forms of marriages or different ways that marriage is expressed right um and uh, for us to go back to the very blueprint of marriage to understand what god had in store for us as we uh, as as he instituted marriage in itself so before we just get started what do you see are the different um forms of marriages what have you come across as different expressions or different forms of marriage in our world around so you can just unmute just quickly share um what you what you think you know what are the different expressions of marriage or maybe even people may have opinions or views of marriage so uh, just quickly unmute and share or you could even type on the chat and that will be that will also work Okay, there's no right wrong answers here. Okay, everyone is free to share. All right, go ahead. Yes, awaiting some responses. Okay, maybe I should. Okay, marriage is. Uh, thank you, Anthony. So marriage is. yeah mar marriage is joining of two people male and female so i what my question was what are expressions of marriage that you see in and around our world yes one is joining of a male and female okay uh, some someone's written traditional marriage a love marriage okay what else thank you thank you for those responses keep them coming what else what are the other it's a design of god yes what do you see in the world around that was my question what kind of relationships or marriages do you see in the world around what expressions of marriage do you see any other thoughts okay so you would find that that as of now you know in in the current uh, time and age that we live in there are a lot of distorted expressions of marriage and this would include um marriages between a man and a man or a woman and woman or uh, relationships where people coexist together without uh, going through marriage or there are child marriages or there are um multiple uh, marriages of a person marrying many people uh, together or there can be a marriage of convenience so uh, or like we, like we spoke about you know marriages of the same sex now these are all distorted or forms of marriage that was not in the blueprint of god and that's what you will see around but when we are looking at marriage as christian believers we are looking at the bible as our standard okay and we are looking to see how we can learn and understand about marriage from the perspective of how god designed it to be and to ensure that when we are in marriage that we live according to the word of god according to what god teaches us about marriage so the first and foremost um uh, understanding or the statement of belief that we hold about marriage is that god is the designer of marriage he is the one who um bought about the very institution of marriage and let's look through scripture to get a basis of that so if anyone can just unmute and read genesis chapter 2 Verses eighteen to twenty-five. Genesis two eighteen to twenty-five. Would someone quickly unmute and read it, please? And the Lord God said, "It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper com comparable to him." Out of the ground, the Lord formed the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air 
and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. So Adam gave names to all cattle, to the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. And the Lord God caused deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken under man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Verse 25, uh, Rin. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Okay, thank you so much. So when you look at this account of uh, how God, you know, God brings, uh, creates uh, everything, you know, one by one. And prior to this account of reading in verse 18, you will see that God called all that he created good, right? Everything that he created, the the, the sun, the moon, the birds, the, the animals, uh, all, all, all the land, the sea, everything that he created, he looked back and, and saw that it was good. You would notice in verse 18, it says that uh, God says, it's not good for the man to be alone and thus god says so i'll make him a helper and a companion so adam being alone was something that god noticed that was not good and so he bought god himself bought a helper or a companion who could be suited for him who would be a helper to him so when we when we look at this, if man were to be alone, what would happen? He would be on his own, he would be isolated, he would probably want things for himself. There would be a, a sense of maybe selfish, selfishness that's there. And in order to, uh, to keep this away, that's why you'd see God put man into a deep sleep, removed one of his ribs, replaced it with flesh, and bought a woman and presented him to the man. Okay, So this is something that God himself did, which shows us that God designed marriage. And it was to, to bring down, to eliminate anything that the man would experience on being alone. So you would see again in that verse, in verse uh, 23, that uh, Adam looked at Eve and said, and you know, he recognized and said, okay, this is someone who is just like me, right? He could, I could relate to, to this creation, unlike the rest of the creation that God had made, you know, his relation to maybe animals or his relation to the to nature around was not as strong as the way that he would relate to someone who is like him. So he recognized Eve to be somebody like him. And so when God bought Adam, uh, God bought Eve to Adam, we know that God himself was, was the one who instituted the first marriage, or rather, in other words, he's the one who solemnized the wedding. And you see that in Genesis 2, verses 24 to 25. And if we if we were to look at a definition of marriage a definition of marriage as uh, as you know as comes from that uh, uh, from that verse is that it is marriage is a man and a woman who leaves all earthly relationships embraces each other and becomes one person before god so and there and as a result it says so therefore because of what god did in creating a woman for Adam, that's how marriage came into existence or came into being. So our, our belief is that God was the one who designed this uh, union of a man and a woman coming together in marriage. So when God was the one who made his counterpart, it's when God made Eve, he made her in such a way that she would be most suitable for Adam in every aspect of the creation, right? It, whether it be physically, it be socially, whether it be 
um, intellectually, emotionally, created one who was like him, but was quite different, but was very different from the way that uh, that he was. Okay, so um, when when we look further at uh, at certain scripture, we begin to see what it means when when we're looking at marriage. Uh, what are some of some of the essence in marriage that we will see? So let's just look at Matthew chapter nineteen verses three to six. Would somebody please read that out? Someone else could read Matthew chapter nineteen verses three to six. Anybody else? Matthew 19, 3 to 6. Matthew 19, chapter 3 to 6. Some Pharisees came to him to test him. They asked, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any and every reason? Haven't you read, he replied, that at the beginning the creator made them male and female and said, for this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one. Therefore, what God has joined together, let man not separate. Okay, thank you. So you would see here Jesus is endorsing again what scripture has written. In verse 4 it says, Haven't you read the scripture that says, In the beginning the Creator made people male and female? And he says, For this reason... There are certain aspects in marriage, and let's look at that. Um, to leave, to leave, which means you do not, um, you, which means to keep away, to abandon, to set aside, that is to leave. Second is to cleave, which means to join together, which means to unite, which means to bring together. And Third, has joined together. Literally, it would mean to become one or become so much together that they're one. So these aspects in marriage or the definition that you look for in marriage is a man and woman coming together, leaving every earthly relationship, cleaving or embracing one another and becoming one person or becoming one flesh before God. So... Uh, scripture also talks about what God has brought together, let no one cut away, let no one severe. So since God is the one who's designed the marriage, since God is the one who bought the marriage, what we're going to look for from now is the principles or the ways that he talks about how uh, a strong marriage can be built. So because God has designed it, he's the, he's the author of it. Like, for example, you get someone who makes maybe a phone or makes a device. If you want to use, use it, you need to go back to its manual. You need to understand what the manual says about what the product is. So similarly, God's the one who bought, Adam, uh, bought Eve to Adam, bought them together to cleave together so that they would be one. So we look back at God to understand what are some perspectives that we must keep when we look at marriage, that when we when we when concerns marriage. So what we're going to do is looking at certain perspectives about what marriage is. Okay, so are we good? All right. Okay, so let's go. The first one, the first perspective that we look at is that marriage is a good thing. Marriage is a good thing. And let's uh, take a scripture. It's Proverbs chapter 18, verses 22. If someone could read that out, Proverbs 18, 22. Proverbs 18, chapter 18, verses 22. The man who finds a wife finds a treasure, and he receives favor from the Lord. Okay, thank you, thank you, Prince. So, what what do we see here? You know that marriage is whatever God created, whatever He designed, is good. Um, he calls what He designs good. So, when we say something is good, it definitely is given to us as a as a as a benefit. 
Okay, it was designed to benefit us. It was designed to really bless us. It was designed to bring about greater things in our individual lives. And that's what scripture talks about. He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. So that shows that whenever, uh, whenever we go, get on to knowing that what God has given us is a good thing, alongside with it comes blessing. Now, even as we discuss this, there's sometimes, um, I think even, you know, even maybe even in our personal lives or in lives that we've seen of others, we may experience certain conditions or circumstances that make life very difficult. Or, um, you know, things in marriages sometimes go wrong or uh, does, does not, does not, uh, does not come about in the way that uh, we 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 read in scripture saying okay, marriage is a good thing, so we're expecting that many things would happen well, right? So, uh, and, and what happens is that we sometimes feel that marriage is a bad thing because of these challenges or because of these uh, the kind of struggles that we may go through um, or the kind of difficulties that a husband and a wife face. There are so many issues that may come. Maybe there isn't an understanding, expectations aren't met, or um, there could be financial struggles, there could be health issues, there could be um, unfaithfulness, there could be uh, misunderstanding, so much. So even in the worst situation, the perspective that God gives us is that marriage is a good thing. So we have a choice to either look at marriage from the way God sees it, or from the way that we see it as part of our circumstance, right? So no matter whatever reality you may be facing at this point of time, the way God has spoken about marriage is that it's a good thing. So as a husband and wife, uh, to be able to confess that where they are or, or who they are with in their marriage is a good thing. And it was designed by God and it was something that God instituted. And that, it, and and the more that you confess it, that you know it was designed to bless, to benefit, and to really build our lives. And with the wisdom of God, with the with the understanding that we have, we learn to do how what is right, and we really experience what God intended for us in marriage. Okay, so that's the first perspective we look at. Marriage is a good thing as God designed it to be. Okay. Let's look at a second point. The second point that we look at is marriage was designed as an institution that need to be honored, that need to be held <clears throat> in honor and in reverence. Um, I'll, I'll read uh, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. It says, honor marriage and guard the sacredness of sexual intimacy between wife and husband. God draws a firm line against casual and illicit sex. So when we look at marriage, it is something that is to be held in reverence. It's to be held in honor. And uh, uh, whatever happens within marriage, any form of intimacy must be something that is held sacred, that's held holy, and it's to be guarded with all care and guarded with all purity. So uh, a lot of times, um, uh, you know, especially when you, when you discuss about marriage, often it is seen as a social institution, right? Something that you do for, um, uh, because everyone does it or because, uh, you know, it, it, it's a form, it's a culture. Uh, you need to ensure that you keep, keep on extending your family you know, having them generation after generation. But the way that God designed uh, marriage, it's not as an institution that we do just because it's a social norm or a social standard, but it is because it was designed and instituted by God for greater purposes. And that's what we will be looking at further on in, in our course. So when we look at marriage, we, we are uh, we we hold it with that kind of a reverence because we know that 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 honors God. A godly marriage, a biblical marriage, honors God, and we would want to honor what He desires 
of, of our marriage. So that's the instruction that God's given us to, to really honor the institu institution of marriage. Okay, let's move to the third point, which is marriage is a solemn covenant or it is a solemn promise. Um, let's look at uh, Malachi chapter 2, verses 13 to 14. Would somebody kindly read that verse? Malachi chapter 2, verses 13 to 14. Malachi chapter 2, verses And this have ye done, covering the altar of the Lord with tears, with weeping, and crying out in so much that he regarded not offering any more or received it with good will at your hand. Yet ye say, wherefore, because the Lord had been witness between thee and thy wife of thy youth, against whom thou hast dealt treacherously, yet is she thy companion and the wife of thy covenant. This is King James. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Anthony. Right, so what do we see here is that um, when God brought about marriage, these, and, and I'm sure um, a lot of us would have been married by speaking vows or by establishing our vows to one another, for those who are married to one, one another in the presence of God. So it is a covenant relationship that you made with one another in the presence of God, probably uh, in, the, in the way that um, um, uh, you, know, you, you spoke your vows. Um, maybe it was in church or you know, wherever, that there, was, there was a sense, there was a way that you uh, shared of your covenant relationship with one another. Okay. And that was through a form of vow. So you establish a promise, you establish uh, a, a vow saying that, you know, God is witness in this, uh, in this act of marriage, in this, um, in, in this institution that I'm getting into. So this, um, uh, this union together between a man and woman, woman naturally is established through vows that you spoke. But God stands as a witness to this uh, to this covenant of, of faith. And so uh, when we're looking at marriage, we're looking at it as a lifetime covenant. It is a lifetime promise that you have made. And God desires that you hold on to that promise. So it's a lifetime covenant. It's a commitment between that one man and one woman. And that's, that's how God sees it. Rather than um, what you would notice in, in the general marriages that you may see in the world around, it's a matter of convenience. You know, I'm married here today, maybe tomorrow when I don't feel like it, I can walk out. Or if there is something that comes in challenging, then I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I do not need to hold on to the promise. Or it comes with certain conditions. But when, when we look at the Bible, the Bible says that the commitment, the covenant we keep is something God desires to hold on till uh, as a lifetime commitment that we have. Okay. Uh, any questions at this point? Just, uh, just a quick, uh, short two-minute thing for any questions. Please feel free to ask questions. If there are doubts, you haven't understood something or you know, you have a, a different idea, understanding, please feel free to share and open up. If not, we'll get into the next point. Okay, so let's look at point four. Okay, thank you, Ren. Let's look at point four. Point four, it talks of how marriage is between one man and one woman only. So we, we looked through Genesis uh, chapter 2, verses 24 and 25. We said, we saw that, you know, um, uh, a man will leave his father and his mother and cleaves with his wife and they become one flesh. And the two of them, the man and his wife, uh, you, you know, were naked, but they didn't feel any kind of shame. So when, when we look at, um, at marriage, what are we looking at? It's that you, that there were two aspects we looked at, right? To be able to leave 
so that we can join together or we can cleave. So we we it is the responsibility of both the husband and the wife to be able to leave all other relationships and then join to one another. So although it, it does say here that uh, the man leaves his father and mother and embraces his wife, this is also applicable to the woman, that you leave all other relationships, whether it be parental, whether it be other kinds of close relationships that you've had, you leave that relationship and cleave to this. So the first responsibility for a young man or a young woman is to ensure that they establish that independence from their parents and all other earthly relationships. So, uh, and this is this is fairly important, especially maybe in a, in a kind of culture that that uh, I live in, and maybe some of you also probably understand that the 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 dependence that a young man or a young woman would have on his uh, parents that's another relationship what we what we need to establish as a healthy healthy uh, disconnect okay now this doesn't mean that you don't take care of your parents because that's generally the question that i'm asked you know um, uh, what does it mean that i don't take care of my parents does it mean that i don't look after their needs it doesn't mean that you have you you need to ensure that you take care or you are there to support your family members or your parents but your first responsibility or your allegiance first comes to your spouse and that would mean either in decision making in working things together um, in uh, communication in doing things all comes initially the initial responsibility is your spouse so it is to establish that independent you know that that sense of dependence that one may have had prior to marriage to establish that establish that independence and cleave and join together with your spouse the second responsibility you would have is to make that commitment to one another establishing that commitment to one another now you would we we all understand that you know when you think of a project that uh, you're working on maybe it just needs two people if there are more than two people it can be an extremely crowded place right so similarly in marriage when a when a man and a woman a husband and a wife come together there is a certain um, bond or a certain uh, circle that they form and this circle is only meant for the husband and wife because they are brought together by god and there, is, there isn't a room for anything or anyone else to come into this inner circle. And when others get or interfere in this circle, either in the form of um, you know, uh, uh, getting in their decisions or uh, uh, stealing away the time that the couple have together, or uh, um, when there is uh, emotional dependence on somebody else, this crowds this inner circle. And as a result of which, it will experience burden. It will begin to experience some form of stress. So a marriage that gets crowded um, by people entering into the inner circle through some emotional dependence or uh, relationships that are in a, inappropriate um, can form stress and it is important uh, to severe or move away those those kind of um, uh, those kind of um, attachments so that the husband and the wife can really focus on one another okay like maybe give you an example so if if there is one of the spouses who has uh, a strong dependence on their own parents and they they give the importance to their um, uh, parents more than the, the the spouse. This inner circle, you know, often gets broken and gets violated, and that is not what God, what's God's design. So, in other words, just as we would encourage the husband and wife to build dependence on one another, this is also something you know we warn parents of to be able to let go 
of their adult son or their adult daughter so that they have the capacity and the ability and um, uh, the, the, uh, the impetus to actually give attention to the spouse in order to work together. So even if when struggles happen between a young married couple, to allow them to establish a way and help helping them to sort out their own problems rather than parents getting involved in uh, the issues of these adult adult children okay so that's what we mean by uh, a marriage is only between one man and one woman only now even as we speak about this we also want to um, discuss about how uh, distorted marriages are uh, very prevalent in our age today right and what i mean by distorted marriage is the way that uh, gay marriages or homosexual marriages have been approved by by so many okay we look at uh, scripture and say that uh, there is there that, that is something a homosexual lifestyle is not something that god approves of god's word teaches us, if you look in Romans chapter 1, verses 26 to 28, he teaches us that homosexuality is sin and not in part of God's design. So uh, that that isn't a marriage. That is a, a, a place of, um, uh, of, of a sinful lifestyle. Okay. But even when uh, so when, when we're looking at this, we also remember, we also um, keep in mind that God, uh, although he hates the lifestyle, the sin lifestyle of homosexuality, he still loves the people. He still loves people. Um, uh, you know, the, it is not dependent on the style, lifestyle that they are in. God loves people. And so we are also called to love people who may be trapped in this sense of uh, a lifestyle of homosexuality or um, any kind of a, a, a same-sex marriage, but what we what we do not do is we do not agree. We do not condone that lifestyle. Instead, we reach out to them in the love of God. We reach out to them in helping them, challenging them uh, to explore and to see what God has designed. And we do that through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the power of what God calls us to do. So this principle of God bringing one man and one woman together to build an inner circle so that it can be protected. So in, in, in other words, to ensure that there aren't any other forms of um, uh, uh, interruptions or, or people who uh, who uh, binge into the into this uh, this sacred uh, bond? All right. So we've covered a couple of points. Uh, we uh, different perspectives. We said that marriage is a good thing. We spoke about marriage being an institution to be honored. We spoke about how marriage is a solemn covenant, and marriage is between one man and one woman only. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll have a break of 10 minutes. It's uh, 10.49 on my clock. We will resume back at 11 o'clock. So you can grab yourselves a cup of coffee or a little breakfast and we will meet back soon.